It's crossover time, San Francisco 49ers and Los Angeles Rams getting ready for week two. Two teams that have yet to lose in 2023. We'll see what happens there. Uh, the biggest storylines, key matchups in this game, and what it takes to win or lose this game for each team, and maybe some predictions as well for week two. Coming at you right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another Locked On Podcast Network crossover episode, Locked On 49ers and Locked On Rams. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker here of Locked On 49ers with Travis Rogers of Locked On Rams. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you are subscribed up to Locked On 49ers and Locked On Rams, respectively, on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Uh, this crossover episode, as all crosso- crossover episodes are, brought to you by... Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Well, Travis, uh good talking to you a couple times last year. There's been some really good 49ers and Rams games in recent history. Uh, there's always a lot of red in the stands when the 49ers travel down to SoFi oh, as they will here in Los Angeles, but I don't know if I was expecting necessarily to be for the 49ers to be facing a a one and oh Rams team. I think expectations were low for the Rams this year, but uh, the stars at least came out pretty bright. And then uh, there's a certain wide receiver that looked a lot like a different wide receiver that was out there last Sunday for the Rams. Yeah. Things were um, unexpected to say the least, Brian, it it was, it was interesting because I've been saying it all, all all preseason long and and on locked on Rams and DMAC and I have been talking about this, that I kept going by, I'm not going to listen to what they're telling me. I'm going to go by what they're showing me and what they had showed me all preseason, what they had showed me all off season, what they had showed me when, whether it's Jalen Ramsey or Bobby Wagner or a whole bunch of other guys, everybody leaving and very few guys coming in was going to be a, hey, I don't think this team is going to be very good. I don't think this team's going to be loaded up with talent. Sean McVay kept saying, no, 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 just wait, just wait, just wait. This may come as a big surprise to you, but apparently Sean McVay knows more about his team than I do because the team looked pretty darn good. And uh, I I can't wait for what's coming up on on Sunday against these two teams because I'm not even a little surprised that the Niners are good, but that the Rams, not only that they won, that they, they tend to match up pretty well with Seattle, but that the way that they won and how convincing that they won and how good Matthew Stafford and a bunch of other guys look, I can't wait to see him run it back. I think one thing that's very clear with the Los Angeles Rams, and I think we can say the same for the San Francisco 49ers and the Seattle Seahawks as well. Maybe not the Arizona Cardinals, but the three teams that I mentioned first, they're very well-coached teams. Yeah. So for me, when and I watched a lot of the Rams and Seahawks game because it was after the 49ers played, uh, it, not to say it was of what I expected, but I definitely wasn't surprised to see the outcome. You know, the, the Rams, they are a well-coached team. You know, as long as McVay's been there, most of the time, as long as he's had a competent quarterback, like they win, and they win a decent amount of games. So to see with Matthew Stafford leading the way, not surprised. Now, maybe the leading receiver who got the bulk of the receptions there, especially with Cooper Cup out, I think that that part with, you know, a guy, I wasn't expecting to see that. Yeah, no, ne- neither was I, Croc, because, you know, to hear Sean McVay tell it when they were saying, oh, you know, for, for the last two seasons, but hey, Tutu Atwell looks great in camp. Tutu Atwell looks great in camp. I tell you, Tutu Atwell's figured it out. And I kept saying, yeah, yeah, great. Am I ever going to actually see it in the football game? We finally got to see it. And like you guys are mentioning, you know, Puka Nakua was a guy that they took in the fifth round, was somebody that ever said, oh, you know, you know, he reminds me, he looks a lot like Robert Woods, and he being very smart like Cooper Cup, and he's going to be able to do this, that, and the other thing. Like, yeah, okay, then why did he last until the fifth round? And at least for one week, he looked absolutely amazing. This week is such a different test because the Niners are so loaded on both sides of the ball, so many incredible players, that, as, as you guys well know, that what Rams fans were incredibly excited for an afternoon and maybe a full day on, on Monday, but the, the the sobriety check of the Niners coming to town was very, very quick, and now we're getting ready for that for sure. 
not, not to get too hung up on your receivers, but the last one you mentioned, I don't want to butcher his name. He's at a BYU, right? Yeah, started at Washington okay. and then transferred to BYU for his last year. His grandmother actually was ill, and so he moved to Utah to be closer to her, and uh, that he, he finished his college career at BYU, yeah. Well, I watched him, and the first time just seeing him, I went to the Senior Bowl, and a lot of what I like to do is maybe some of the guys not know who they are. I like to really start a lot of my process there. Mm -hmm. And watching him, he stood out. He was a tremendous route runner there. He was smooth. And for them to identify that type of receiver, I guess I could say I'm not surprised because this is the same group that maybe valued Cooper Cup in the draft a little bit more than other teams, a guy who didn't run well, but also another senior bowl guy. So uh, find a couple guys there that are able to contribute in a very specific way for their team. Uh, again, that's something I'm not surprised by. Well, they needed it, right, with Cup down on IR for at least four weeks. And, you know, we'll see whether or not he's able to come back. They play Arizona in week five. Uh, or should, excuse me, they play uh, Philadelphia in week five. They play Arizona in week six. So maybe you give him one more week before you bring him back for something like that. But they absolutely needed it because everything that you heard coming in to this season was, well, as long as you have Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup, everything else just needs to be okay. And those three guys will kind of hold down the fort. And, I was a little skeptical of that because, you know, it's, it's football, man. It's not, it's not, it's not an NBA where if I got a guy or two, I can hang around. It's all the pieces need to be pretty good. And guys like Nakua were, were just terrific. He, he, he impressed me, impressed Rams fans across the board. And I'm sure a bunch of people went running for their fantasy uh, waiver wires and tried to pick him up shortly thereafter. I actually drafted in, uh, in my home league, I drafted Cooper cup in the first round and sure. uh, I ran out the waiver wire and got, Puka Nakua. So I'm going to plug sure. him in and we'll see if he can get another 15 targets against the 49ers this week. But it's pretty clear that, that Sean McVay can can coach guys open a lot like Kyle Shanahan can. And yep. he wants guys that can that can route you up, whether it's, you know, Van Jefferson was that sort of a, you know, not the biggest, fastest guy, but a an advanced route runner coming out of college. Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, um, you know, Robert Woods is that style of player as well. So I guess it shouldn't be a shock. And you got to target someone if you're Matthew Stafford. So M McVay can scheme you open and Stafford's still Matt Stafford. So if you're open, he's going to find you. Yeah, that, that was the other big part, too, was that Matthew Stafford not just looked better than he did a year ago, but he looked like Matthew Stafford all over again that you forget. We, we got kind of spoiled pretty quickly, right? Because they make the deal with Jared Goff for Matthew Stafford and they come over and all of a sudden it goes from the Rams don't have the quarterback till they won the Super Bowl like that, right? It just, it happened so quickly. And the reason they won the Super Bowl was because he was terrific. It wasn't like he was along for the ride. He was terrific what they did. Then last year, everything fell apart. The O-line was terrible. He was hurt. He looked old. He looked busted up. He didn't throw in the preseason. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember the videos of him, you know, instead of being at practice, he's kind of throwing the towel on the side, kind of mimicking a throwing motion. The whole thing was just a bust before it even started. He showed up on Sunday against the Seahawks, and that looked like the guy that throws for a million yards every season. That looks like the guy that can make every throw in the playbook. And if they can keep him healthy, if they can keep him upright, he got hit once in that game against Seattle. Obviously, the Niners are going to present a, a different challenge for sure. But uh, if they can keep him relatively healthy, he's going to be able to carve guys up. He's a really, he's still a very high level NFL player. All right, next, the biggest story in San Francisco. Uh, do the 49ers have that quarterback that can get them over the Super Bowl hump? The best matchups in this week two game with the 49ers and Rams and some predictions as well next. Today's crossover episode of Locked On 49ers and Locked On Rams is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind. So you know that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical is simple. You go online, you fill out a form, and then you get a prescription life-saving medi medications right to your door. The Jace case gives you that peace of mind, and you know that you are taken care of in that emergency situation, whether you are stuck somewhere and, and you're, you're out camping with the family and don't have cell reception or any of number of emergency situations and, and, and shortages and storms that could potentially happen to you in your area. So save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off 
by using code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's jace, J A S E, medical.com, promo code locked on. Croc, would you say that, um, that Brock Purdy looking a lot like rookie version of Brock Purdy from last year in a small sample after everything the 49ers have gone through at quarterback looks so much like the real deal. And you almost, it's almost too good to be true in some cases. Is that the biggest story going on for the San Francisco 49ers to you heading into week two that man, you can kind of relax and be like, man, what we saw last year was not a mirage with Brock Purdy. You know, I think that's kind of the low hanging fruit to say Brock Purdy looks the same and he, and he does, he looks good. But to me, I think the bigger Thing that I'm surprised with, or I don't know if I should be surprised, but the defense. I felt like at some point there should be some kind of drop off. You go from Robert Sala, what he did, to D'Amico Ryan's, what he did, and then all of a sudden it's like, all right, you got Wilkes coming in. What's it going to look like with Wilkes as the defense coordinator? You know, are they going to lose a, a step? Are they going to go from the number one defensive team in the NFL to maybe even you know still stay top ten, but like number nine or or number ten? And and if they are, then what would that look like? But they look like their dominant self. So uh, maybe I shouldn't be surprised because they've kind of built their identity on that. They've added guys like Hargraves, and, and we've seen the impact that he made in his first game. But just to see a team that continues to dominate defensively, again, I should, probably should expect it because that's their identity. But, gosh, it, to just see it, uh, that, was, that was awesome. And I think that might be like maybe my most impressive thing that I took away from that game. Even more so than Brock Purdy, who was very impressive. Can I ask you guys something as, as somebody who has not seen as much Brock Purdy as you have that does, does there look to be any ill effects to the injury he suffered in the NFC championship game or did he pick up right where he left off prior to that? He, he picked up where he left off. And, you know, I, I was uh, listening to someone who's a, a physical therapist and they talked about his injury. The most surprising thing with that is uh, there's the surgery that he got that, that specific surgery that has not been around for very long. So they have very limited data on the actual what the actual outcome would be. If he were to get like the Tommy John surgery, well, that's been around for centuries. Right. But the surgery that he has gotten, that he just got, has only been around for a few years. And very limited professional athletes have gotten that specific surgery. So uh, you would think that maybe, you know, how is he going to return and whatnot? A lot of people weren't too worried about it. But once I found out that data that this is a fairly new surgery, I was like, okay, that's interesting. I see no ill effects. He looks like he's throwing the ball well. Um, he didn't have like a big rocket arm to begin with. So his velocity, it looks the same. Uh, but he's throwing, he looks exactly like he did last season. There were a couple of throws. There was one to the sideline uh, that looked like it didn't come out super strong. There was another play that was like, oh, he must have, I think the ball got tipped. And you look back at the replays, like, I don't think that ball got tipped. He just didn't mm -hmm. throw it great. Um, but that that intermediate range, he's got plenty of zip on those balls, and it looked just like it did last year. Uh, he got hit once by T.J. Watt. There's a strip sack, and he got his arm stuck underneath him trying to fight for the fumble. Ended up getting the fumble back, and he's kind of moving his wrist around a little bit after the play. Fine. Was still throwing the ball great. So passed all the tests of getting hit and handling that. Um, and, and, you know, he's, he's been throwing the ball for months now, and he was, you know, cleared to practice at the start of training camp. So I think the timing has been – great for him to build up and yeah it's the same Brock Purdy and it's that aggressively intermediate mindset of the 49ers offense and Kyle Shanahan that he fits in so well with and yeah he's he's not afraid to to throw those darts over the middle of the field is that the the question for this team because there are so many you know incredibly talented players whether it's Warren or whether it's Debo or whether it's Christian McCaffrey or, or any of the Kittle take 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 your pick of whoever wants you to throw in there is it as long as Brock Purdy is good enough that you just got to stay healthy and hope to catch a, a break here and there is that it is that the only I, thing I, missing I think we would like to use the word like good enough but I think he's a little bit more than good enough you know yeah. just some of the things he always he consistently makes the right decision. He consistently makes the right throw. He consistently makes the right play. So I just saw this crazy throw by Matthew Stafford the other day where I felt like it went through two guys. I didn't know. I didn't even know who he was throwing to. Like, where's this ball going? It's on the sideline, perfect spot between multiple guys. And boom, it, you're probably not seeing Brock Purdy make that throw or even attempt that throw. And if he does, he might get himself in some trouble. But the throws that he does attempt, 
it almost looks like, man, this is too easy. Like, no, these guys are running wide open. But it's just him always finding the open guy. And at times when maybe they're not as open, I think he does a good job of throwing with timing and rhythm. And then if nothing is there, he has done a good job of making some plays on the move. So when you watch him, you know, you won't watch and say, man, this guy is more talented than Matthew Stafford. Like nobody will ever say that. But the way that he functions in Kyle Shanahan's offense, and if you can't hear it in my voice, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed by how he has continued that from last year, which looked good. Okay, can he keep it going? He had the injury. All right, we'll, we'll see. Teams have more film. Are they going to be able to stop him? They, they, he looks exactly the same, and the way he's hitting these windows and the plays he's making is exactly the same. Yeah, and it's funny because he's not going to – the greatest quarterbacks of all time have bad games. So I'm sure. kind of waiting for that. Like, is he going to have a bad game? Because he <laughs> hasn't yet. It's amazing. And even those plays, like, he'll he'll, he'll take off out the back door of the pocket, and it, it almost looks like frenetic. Like, is he under control or is he not? And he always ends up making a good play, whether it's throwing the ball away or getting away from a sack or, you know, on the run and then finding somebody, and he's so quick, and his eyes are always looking for that throw while he's scrambling around, and he sees it and he lets it go. And actually, it was Pete Carroll who I think made one of the best comps for Brock Purdy. He called him Fran Tarkenton. And I was like, you know what, Fran Tarkin, he, I, he, I remember he was known for scrambling, but that was before my time. So I went back and watched Fran Tarkin in highlights and a guy that was not very big, kind of frenetic pace to the way he ran around and just created. And I was like, man, I can see it. That was kind of a good call by, by Pete Carroll. Yeah, I hadn't. I mean, Fran Tarkin, did, like you mentioned, is a, a little bit before my time. He was just about done by the time I remember watching football there in Minnesota, but that actually is a really interesting comp because every time I see the Rams and the Niners play each other, whether it's Jimmy G or whether it's, you know, any of the other guys that the Rams have gone up against over the years, it's always like, well, you know, I don't know if this – It's like, every time they come to play the Rams, they look like they're never going to throw an incomplete pass. Like you were saying, like that. when does that bad game – when's that game that I see I turn on the TV on a Sunday afternoon? It's like, okay, that, there's the Jimmy G everybody talks about. That guy never showed up against the Rams. Never. <laughs> He, he, he came out there and he just like dime, 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 touchdown, quick out. They never got any pressure on him. They were really good as far as keeping Aaron Donald at bay with a little two-way. You know, are they going to throw? Are they going to run? That, 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 that quarterback that sometimes, whether it's even a C.J. Beathard, whoever it might have been, it's like, okay, that guy, not when they play the Rams. I don't know if that's a Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay thing, but that matchup always seems to go really well for you guys when they head uh, to play the Rams. Is that the best matchup in this game? Is the matchup of head coaches, McVay versus Shanahan? Why do you Look, think it is that Shanahan has had McVay's number? It, it, it's a great question. I'm sure it's a question that Sean McVay is asking himself because there's no one else in this league, not even Bill Belichick, that he's gotten multiple looks at that Sean McVay hasn't gotten at least the better end of it occasionally. And, you know, not other than the NFC Championship game. And, you know, that was a, a well-played game by the Rams for sure. But, you know, they had to have the uh, Joukowsky tart drop for that thing to go the way that it did. If he holds on to that ball, we're probably having a different conversation. Uh, you know, the Rams, you, you go back to the final game of the regular season two years ago, right, where the Niners, was it, they drove 90 yards with about a minute and a half to go and, and, and scored to, to beat the Rams there. That was the first time that the Rams and the Niners were, like, close. Other than that, they'd gotten clobbered when uh, Kyle Shanahan had been there more often than not. I don't know what it is. The Rams have never been as physical as the 49ers. The Rams have always played from behind in these games. I think that's a big part of it to allow the Niners to, to dictate some pace along the way. I, I'd be very curious if the Rams could get a lead in one of these, what it might look like after that, because the Rams have been chasing points seemingly every time they play. All right, next, we got to make some predictions here and maybe uh, draw a picture of what it might look like for a Rams and 49ers victory respectively next today's episode of 49ers rams crossover is brought to you by prize picks prize picks is the most fun you will have playing daily fantasy sports this season and you can win up to 25 times your money and it is super easy you just select two or more players two to six players and you pick more or less on their projected stats and place that entry and you can place that entry in less than 60 seconds it's just a few taps away and if you have the skills, you can turn that $10 bet into $250 at price picks. For example, uh, it, last week it was Brock Purdy. More than or less than a half an interception. So does he have a clean slate? Then you hit it if you, if you uh, picked the less than 0.5 interceptions. And you would have been a winner if you did pick that in that clean slate. Let's see if Brock Purdy can throw a, 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 another 
seemingly perfect game that he's been throwing throughout his NFL career against those Los Angeles Rams. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday each Tuesday, obviously, and Prize Picks discounts select prayer, player projections up to 25% to provide even more value and unless you pick the uh, more than on Aaron Rodgers and he didn't do anything. He didn't even get that that half a yard for you to to win that more than. So go to prizefix.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That is prizefix.com slash locked on NFL and code lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Okay. Before we get to those predictions, keys to victory. Travis, if you're going to uh, tell me a story about how the Los Angeles Rams beat the 49ers on Sunday, how do you think that game goes? I think it has to look a lot like it looked against the Seahawks last week. And, and namely, n- not just that Matthew Stafford has to be clean and not just that he has to not throw any exceptions, which, which is what went down a, a week ago. But more than anything else, the Rams held the ball for a really long time. It was nearly two to one, right? They, it was about 40 to 20 as far as time as possession went uh, in, in that game last week. I, I don't know if they can control it quite like that against the Niners, but the less time that Rams defense is on the field, the better. They, they, they did a good job, all things considered, as many you know, lowly drafted players as they have, inexperienced players as they have. But that was Geno Smith and Tyler Lockett missed some time along the way. And this was not a team that, you know, is terribly explosive offensively. The Niners are clearly that. They are explosive offensively. They do have multiple guys that can make big plays. And and, and just keeping them off the field, I think, is the best defense. You saw Matthew Stafford snap the ball with two, three seconds left on the play clock time after time after time, going all the way back to the first quarter. So I think it's a ball control. I think they have to have that offensive line stand up, and they have to keep that Niner offense off the field to the best of their ability. Croc, what do you think? What's the uh, the path to victory for the 49ers against the Rams Sunday? I think figuring out a way to contain Aaron Donald. Now, they've done that well over the past few years. But the the Aaron Donald stopper, Daniel Brunskill, he's not on the 49ers anymore. And I don't even know why he was so good against Aaron Donald, but he definitely had his best performances uh, during that time. He's not there. So you have to rely on a young uh, second-year player in there at right guard, Spencer Burford. Uh, he's a guy that potentially can kind of get pushed around a little bit. Colton McKivitz, he's on the right side, side of that line as well at that right tackle position. You know, he gave up three sacks and two forced fumbles to T.J. Watt. Now, I know T.J. Watt is special, but Aaron Donald is too. And I know the Rams have got, kind of gone more towards that 3-4 defense where they're able to kind of move Aaron Donald around. Him penetrating over that guard or over that tackle, that is something that worries me. And if there is one thing that can kind of throw things off a little bit, it's forcing takeaways, especially early in that game. And if it's going to happen, it's going to be Aaron Donald. And the the 49ers didn't really help out the right side of that offensive line all that much on Sunday. They kind of let him go. And so uh, that is an area where if you are um, if you're trying to find the best place for Aaron Donald to get pressure, it's on the, the right side of the 49ers mm-hmm. offensive line and not on Trent Williams side, most likely. The rest of that defense, before I make my prediction of this game, Travis, yep. tell us about some names on that that Rams defense because clearly just one player is not going to get it done. you got to have 10 other guys contributing to uh, to do what they did to the Seahawks last week. So who stood out to you on that defense? Well, I think Ernest Jones did a really good job. You know, He's the only other member of that defense that was a, a member of the Rams team when they won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, right? He, he's the one guy I think that Aaron Donald probably has – you know, something to talk about with when they're in the huddle as far as what they're doing. Everybody else is either incredibly green or new, right? Uh, You saw him go out and get John Johnson during the offseason. He didn't even play a snap last week. So they're going with their young guys. They're going with uh, some of the newbies. I thought that Byron Young did a pretty good job, all things being equal. I thought that he did a a better job when there were some clear passing situations, when he was able to just try to go get the quarterback. I thought that he looked like the athlete that everybody was saying that he was going to be when it was a little bit earlier in the game and you weren't quite sure if Seattle was going to play a, a run or a pass. 
he wasn't great at following his technique. He got caught inside a couple of times and gave up the edge for some pretty big plays. We know what that could look like if Christian McCaffrey is able to take care, uh, or should say to take advantage of some of those things. Um, Kobe Turner inside did a pretty good job, but again, it was more once it was a kind of a one-way go uh, for those Rams defenders. They didn't have to play the run too much. Those are some of the names. That I, I, I thought that the guy that looked the best coming into the first game, we didn't hear his name a ton, is, is Trey Tomlinson. Um, I, I still think that he's got a chance to be a pretty good player. Uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like moving forward throughout the rest of the season. But this is a work in progress. This is Aaron Donald and a bunch of guys that we're all getting to know. And you got to be pretty deep into the weeds with the Rams to, you know, talk about a, a, a Russ Yeast or some of these other guys that yeah. have played a little bit. But, you know, I, I, I other than the teammates themselves, we're all kind of getting to know these guys on the fly because they just haven't played a ton of NFL football, e e even after last week. Yeah, we played a game in the offseason when we were looking at the division, and uh, we played a game with, is this a real NFL player, or did I just make this guy up? <laughs> and, yeah, Russ, Russ Yeast was a good one there. It stumbled. <laughs> some um, but it's an interesting team, but they're well coached, and you That's can't it, take them right? lightly. And I think it's important for the 49ers. It, it might have been even better for the 49ers that the Rams won in week one. So they would sort of mentally be like, hey, this is still a football team that that is that, that's going to come out and play well, that can beat you if you don't play well. And we see that in the NFL all the time, the parody. And you think you know what's going to happen on Sunday and the ball is oblong and it bounces funny and you never know how things are going to go. With that said, uh, I don't think I can pick against the 49ers in this game. They're favored by what? I think eight points. Eight on, I look. Yeah, on the road. Uh, the 49ers travel well. There's going to be a lot of, you know, I, I don't think you can give the normal home bump in SoFi for the Rams and because of that reason. So um, th there, there's a reason they're favored by that much. And I think they should be favored by that much. And I think Kyle Shanahan's offense with the way Brock Purdy has been playing to look good coming off of that injury, you get Nick Bosa now that's got a game under his belt can probably play a, a pretty much a full workload of snaps, man. Fred Warner was just unbelievable in that game. Um, if, if they can, if, if they can cover up the Puka Nakua's and the two, two at of the world, the 49ers should be able to handle the, the Los Angeles Rams. So, uh, you know, I've got to take the 49ers by 10 in this one. Yeah. I, I think that that's probably the most likely outcome. The way that the Rams can win this is if they do find a way to keep guys like Nakua hot, if they do find a way to keep Matthew Stafford pretty clean, if they can get a takeaway at a key point in the game, but if it just comes down to a traditional, our guys against their guys, the 49ers have better players right now. Now, like, like you said, right, that, so this is the NFL, that even the, the best team and the worst team, the talent gap's about this big, right? That there's just – there's not a ton of difference, but the Niners might be the most talented team in the league. The Rams are a team, despite how good they looked a week ago, that I believe is still in transition. Now, you know, I said if they could get through their first six weeks at three and three, they got a really good chance to make the playoffs. And I think that they had to win that Seattle game. This is a game that I thought they might drop – just because of the bad matchup, because of the talent disparity, because Cooper Cup's missing some time. So they're about on track. And like you mentioned, lots of 49er fans at SoFi coming up on Sunday. I, I think the 49ers win. If the Rams do do it, it's because maybe Brock Purdy gives a couple away, but I, I don't expect it. Brock Purdy has been liable to put the ball in harm's way. You know, Patrick Peterson, he was a guy who said he's going to get him, and there's a tail. 49ers win after him. He gave up two touchdowns. It wasn't a great outing for Patrick Peterson, but he did have a couple of opportunities to get his hands on some passes that he just did not capitalize on. So uh, if the Rams have better fortunes when it comes to just kind of catching the ball, mm -hmm. that is something that could potentially change the game. Now, like Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Brock Purdy, it feels like he's only going to give you one or two of those kind of opportunities. And if you don't take advantage of it, he is going to be efficient for the better part of this game so that is one thing for especially a young Rams team that's trying to kind of get it together especially at the linebacker position and at the safety uh, I mean the secondary spot uh, you have to take advantage of those opportunities I, I like the 49ers in this I just looking at the 49ers and just how they're built it feels like right now a team that's just really difficult to beat and I don't know if I'll pick a d team to beat the 49ers for the remaining part of this year because they're so sound running the ball. They're so sound in the passing game. They're so sound defending the run, and they're terrific defending the pass as well. They have guys that take the ball away. Uh, if, if When they lose, it, which I'm pretty sure it will happen, it'll be a little bit more surprising, but I'm not thinking that it's going to be the Rams this week. Uh, real quick on the way out here, Travis, uh, yeah. there's with the Aaron Rodgers injury, there's been talk that, oh, maybe uh, maybe the Jets will call up the Rams about Matthew Stafford at some point. Could you see something like that happen if 
I know it's a little bit more difficult now that they, you know, they, they started the season one and oh, yep. Could you envision something mid season where the Rams are maybe sellers? Well, I, I, I think that's the right track, right? I'm sure that the Jets will call again. They called in the offseason. Why wouldn't they call again? If, if this was their plan B, if Aaron Rodgers didn't get traded in the first place, I don't know why it wouldn't be their plan B if he got hurt the way that he did. Uh, I think it all depends on how the Rams play. You know, if, I, I said it on my radio show. If the Rams get run over by the Niners on Sunday, that conversation on Monday morning is going to be a lot louder than it was on Tuesday morning after Rodgers went down. They go to Cincinnati in week three on Monday Night Football. You run into Joe Burrow and it looks a certain way, that conversation gets a little louder. Now you win either of those two games. You beat uh, you know, a, a, an Arizona team and everything kind of calms down a little bit. They go to Indianapolis in week four. So I, I think if they stay around 500, it's not anything other than chatter. But if they start taking it on the chin a few weeks in a row, I think you're going to hear more and more about it. And then the Rams have a decision to make like, hey, if we're actually not in this, what could we get for Matthew Stafford? I think then maybe they at least have some discussions about it internally. But as long as they're around 500, I don't think it's I don't even think they return the call. Yeah, I don't think Sean McVay came back to tank. Right. Right. <laughs> but man, uh, I over the offseason, I was talking about, hey, I wouldn't be that upset if the 49ers dropped one to the Rams and the Cardinals just to make sure that that other quarterback that's in the in, in the fine city of Los <laughs> Angeles doesn't end up in the NFC West. You have no idea how many photoshopped pictures of Caleb Williams in a Rams jersey that have been sent to me <laughs> o- over the last few weeks and months. So it's, it's, it's certainly on all of our minds. And look, had Seattle gone differently, we would be having a different conversation. Yeah. But, uh, they looked really good, and I'm optimistic about the rest of the way. All right, well, it should be fun. Another uh, Sean McVay versus Kyle Shanahan matchup. 49ers, Rams in week two. Appreciate it. Travis, always fun chatting with you, as always. Always. Enjoy it, guys. All right, make sure everyone is subscribed up on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Thanks for making Locked On 49ers and Locked On Rams your first listens every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network.